ready to be on, Aaron Alexander? I'm ready to go. Thank you so much for having me in my own office. We love it. We love it. We are here, Coast Cryo. Coast Cryo, it's Venice, Venice, California. Right Venice, California. Right near where you live. And you know what? We are going beyond today with Aaron Alexander aligned in every way, shape, and form. He has his aligned therapy, his aligned bands, he has a aligned podcast. So if you haven't heard about him, I found out about him through Bulletproof Conference. And I did his his outbreak that he did, and he did a movement session with us, and he had us move in every direction. It was absolutely fantastic. We were falling down, getting up, moving every which way, and he is so graceful to see him move. He's been dancing for years, got into ballet a lot, and so he has these fluid movements, ultra flexible. I mean, I'm super flexible, but he's at a whole different level from his flexibility. So. We are blessed to have you here with us today. Aaron styled us with these amazing headphones and uh, just the mic. So I can't drop the mic because it's attached to my head right now. But we probably would at some point Something. after this podcast is over and or, or summit, if you will. But today we are going beyond on whole body, whole brain. And movement is the essence of everything for me it's it's athleticism has rhythms of flammadiddles like drum beats where you're just moving it's cross crawl coordination you, you're syncing all these elements together and we train in non-linear so we're doing semicircles figure eight so we're connecting with the infinite flow of the universe that's what i love about movement for sport and movement for life but when you do this you can optimize your whole well-being so when you talk about movement and whole body, whole brain, what's the first thing that comes to mind for you, Aaron? Uh, so before we were talking a little bit about uh, just how to start integrating some of these principles into everything that we're doing, right? So before this, we were talking about like, okay, like maybe we could sort out a sitting position that we can kind of start stacking variables, right? So we end up waiting to go to a yoga class at 6.30 p.m., Right? When we, we could potentially, instead of that, just make our life be the yoga class. Okay? So something that I think everyone can start to, start to tinker with is just playing with what's my sitting position. So while I'm in my office or my house or wherever it may be, or my car or my transportation, uh, am I able to integrate better movement fundamentals into that? You know, so figuring out, like, okay, cool, yes, that sounds like a great idea. Now what does that mean? You know, something we can, we can start to discuss if you... If you'd like, I love it. I love it. Yeah. No, you know what? It's awesome. He, the, the stacking is like a big word for me, and stacking the nervous system to get you to be a whole brain thinker, a whole brain mover. It's is it's essentially what we do. What I've done for twenty years. You're on a BOSU ball. You're on one leg. You're juggling. You're stacking the nervous system. <laughs> you're adding math equations while you're juggling, while you're balancing on one leg on the BOSU ball. Like these are things that are super dynamic, but to stack your life and to start to move and create. He's sitting with his legs crossed and, and I'm not even gonna attempt to do it. But but this is this it just is feels better. For me. It's not you know, there's no such thing as better or worse, good or bad, it's not a moralistic thing. But it's not to prove a point, I promise. <laughs> it's literally wanting to compress blood out of my legs. Yeah. You know, you can see you may have heard this where, where people that are standing in the same position all day long, so people like you know, clerks or folks that are at a cashier, their body ends up actually creating more blood in order because they're not, they're, they don't have that, that consistent smooth circulation like a, you know, like a bird might have. We're, we're moving, we're circulating ourselves all the time so we can be light and fluid and graceful. As you're standing in place, the way that you move lymph, the way that you move blood and circulate yourself is through that planter dorsiflexion through that range of motion through not just your ankle the rest of your body All right so when, when we're in this position literally what I'm thinking about doing is uh, kind of compressing it's like compression stockings in a way right I want to move that blood out of my legs back up into my heart I want a, a closer circuit I love it well you guys have to understand Aaron is a rolfing expert and he does rolfing for a living here with the line therapy and so when he talks about the body and moving lymph and moving body and doing structural integration and really lots of well, fascial releases and all, but 
that's your essence. So, so go into that a little bit and how you open up the body in, a, in your profession to allow people to really move and become, use their whole body equally. Yeah, something that people could, it would, it would behoove us to, to ponder on is thinking about when you go see a therapist, what we're looking to do is we're looking to have them as a facilitator to help us create space in our body that we, for whatever reason, we weren't able to find on our own. And so you go see that person, say your shoulder carriage is carried, you know, way immediately rotated and protracted in all those different anatomical directions. And we're in this position and you just, you keep exercising and training your biceps and training your pecs and you exacerbate those patterns. And so when we go and see a therapist, ideally we're saying, we're, we're seeing them so they can start to help us create that space. And then from there we have to do it. We have to turn the electricity on in the house. You know, we need to, we need to inhabit the home. If from there, we end up going into movement exercises or movement practice. So something really simple, like just overhead range of motion. You can even, again, sitting while you're in your office or wherever it is, just putting, putting your arms up over your head, keeping your thumbs facing back, stabilizing that shoulder girl, and really punch, 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 punch. Right? This is Kundalini Yoga. This is a lot of different yogas. Okay? That you're going to be spending that you could, you could do. This morning, I did something pretty wacky um, where we were doing, I was doing like a, like a breath of fire thing. And you're really creating that, that compression, really starting to speak to your guts. When we wake up in the morning, we're in this real place of kind of just like stagnance. And so start, starting the day, it's okay, I wanna turn my engine on. All right, so when we see a therapist, what we're, doing, what we're doing with that ideally is they're creating space that we couldn't find on our own and they are educating us on how we can start to keep on perpetuating that space. And that's the really crucial part. So when someone comes and sees me, we create space, but it's all educational. It's all perspective-based. If I'm just, your eyes are closed, and you're checking your cell phone, and I'm just rubbing elbows into your glutes, that's, I have no interest in that. You know, so even people listening as therapists, if you're a therapist, um, something you can play with is starting to integrate a little bit more education in with your clients, and people receive it really well. We have this fear that people don't want to learn. They don't want to grow. They just shut up, get relaxed. You know, but people really, we need to inhabit it. And the way that you do that is through education. Love it. I love it. Now, in addition to being a fantastic athlete as well, you enjoy surfing, I know. And, and, yeah. and for us, surfing is just so dynamic in the flow. Talk about the flow of movement. You know, and then tie it into surfing and how it ties into your life. Yeah. So I started training at uh, Gold's Gym Venice in the last year. And uh, have you been down there at all? I have. Okay. I, I changed with, trained with Jersey Gregoric. Oh, I know Jersey. Who, when he house. was yeah, when he was Just at a few months ago. Really? When yeah. he was with when he was at Gold's Gym here in Venice. Wow. Like, I did Olympic lifting. That was my Olympic lifting coach. 15 years ago, oh, be cool. before Tim Ferriss made him really popular. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Um, yeah, so Gold's is a really beautiful place. It's the mecca of bodybuilding. It is. And what you see with, with that is you see people that have hardwired themselves into these very basic, you know, sagittal, this direction, linear paths. So more bicep curl, more skull crusher, more leg press, and it's just drilling yourself deeper into this one at first it starts as a path, eventually it becomes a rut. You know, then all you end up being is just a, a bodybuilding machine. You look right. really good doing the movements that you've practiced for the last 20 years, but when it comes down to any adaptability, you're screwed. You, don't, you haven't expanded beyond that point. And so as far as something like a surfing, you can tell someone really quick whether they're, they're the body of a surfer or a crossfitter or a MMA fighter, because you, know, you can see the way their, their, their structure is actually put together. But you also just see the way that they move. You know, so someone that's able to, to surf, in order to do that, you have to be able to be able to uh, balance a lot of different variables all at once. Right? So we, you were mentioning like practicing being on a stability ball. That's a really beautiful practice because all of a sudden the equation gets really complicated. But the issue with that is, is if all you do is the surf or all you do is the stability part, then you lack that integration, be able to dig in, be able to pick up a trailer. So I think that the, the real power is, is being able to, to traverse both sides. 
so I can support, stabilize, screw my feet into the ground, engage the hips, get that hip hinge, long neutral spine, grind. That has a lot of value. And then from there, okay, also I can throw a kick, I can dance, I can, you know, be, I, I, I can actually explore more like dynamic movement. But it, it needs to be both. You know, so surfing is, uh, it's really important, but it's only, that's only part of it as well. It's really easy for somebody to be like, oh, it's all you need. You know, explore both. No, definitely. Well, I mean, that's, that's the essence of being a whole brain, whole body performer is to not just be linear in what you're doing or ultra focused in one thing. And where you're going to, if you're a tennis player and you're playing super, uh, just, just long hours all day for a cumulative 20 years, you're going to, yeah, these, you're going to have overdevelopment on one side and it's no different if you're a golfer too. Yeah. I mean, swing opposite handed, train opposite handed, but but uh, being a being able to cross train in multiple sports will allow you to be even better in what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. What kind of cross training do you do? I do a lot. I swim. Cool. I swim mostly uh, for surfing. Well, I play basketball, so I play tennis, basketball. I ride bike. I I swim. I run. Yeah. And. All the winter sports. Do you feel think. like, do you feel sports, as you pick up a new skill, do you feel that spills into the other skills? Oh, definitely. Isn't I'm, it beautiful? Yeah, I think it's so beautiful. And that's that's the, the beauty of it, too, is when I'm training like with Jersey with Olympic lifting for sport, I mean, I'm not the biggest guy in the room. He is. And, and but I'm super stable. So guys twice my size, they can move them. And when, when, when you're stable and you're training the whole body in a top to bottom mo movement, yeah, you're going to have be a higher level performer. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. And then when you could take that, like a, a Olympic lifting for sport modality and see how stacked and stable you can get. If you're a golfer, you're not going to be hunched over the ball swinging. You're going to be a lot more open in your power in your power stance yeah. and then you're able to crush the ball because you have a fuller range of motion so definitely all these sports and and moving and training in different modalities are are unbelievably important i feel and so something that for people like a, a take home for people is uh sorting out your hip hinge you know and that's something that you'll see throughout every sport that you mentioned if you can organize yourself and around and have a really well supported hip hinge then you start to drive that force through your through your glutes through your hips most of us what we end up doing too often which you're doing a really great job of uh, keeping yourself on that front edge of the sit bones mm -hmm. right so it, what you'll see is you can actually tell someone that's going to have like a like a nice booty just by the way that if i did not see the booty i could i could guess with 99 percent accuracy whether there will or will not be a booty there, just based off of the way that they move for you know a few seconds. If they pick something up off the ground, you can see it. Oh, they're gonna have a booty, promise. Right? If they end up actually hinging those hips back, creating a nice angle, as we start to bring those hips backward, I, was, I did an interview with recently with Stuart McGill, he's like back spine expert guy, and one of the things I, I got from him was as that butt goes back behind you, the leverage ends up increasing up to 10 times. Okay, so when you're picking up, when you're doing a deadlift of, say, 200 pounds, the actual weight that's being put into that joint, it's up to more like 2,000 pounds as the butt goes way back there. Okay, so if you end up getting your butt way back behind you, then all of a sudden those glutes are forced to start to activate. If you tend to be more of a person that keeps your butt curled in that like sad puppy dog position, you end up putting all that stress, you outsource it more to your, your lumbar and like low thoracic spine. It's not built for that. Right? And then we end up having, having uh, interesting, interesting little, little, little pieces. The thickening of that fascia, you'll see people that have pain in their backs, they will also tend to have a thickening of the connective tissue around that space. So we get thicker and dumber. Right? So if we can start to just bring some of these really basic fundamentals like activating those hips correctly then all of a sudden the rest of our body can oh, take a break you know we can start placing that muscle where we actually from like a magazine perspective or tv perspective like 
we want to have that muscle in these appropriate places. But so, the way we do it is through the movement. So what's a good exercise without wrenching the facets? Yeah. How do we get ourselves to train the, the pelvic movement? I like sitting as the first starting part. And I like crossing your legs a lot. Okay, so a big thing is people are, um, they're quad dominant, mm -hmm. right? So they're really bound up in their hip flexors and uh, their, their hamstrings are short. So I go all these things like, oh, well, look at this position. This is what it is. All right, and so as we're in this position, we're, we're, we're literally setting ourselves up in a mold of dysfunction. So for, if you're in that position, say you're in that position for maybe six hours a day, right? Some people a lot more than that. You're just, you're literally just building yourself into this, this prison of sorts. So the biggest thing is starting off, figure out front edge of sit bones. Need to be on the front edge of my sit bones. It's okay to go in the back edge, but in general, if we can just find, if you can reach down to your butt cheeks here, grab those little bony protrusions coming out to the, uh, you know, they're like just east and west of the anus. <laughs> <laughs> where the sun where, don't shine. Where the sun doesn't shine. Grabbing those guys, pulling those guys back, and being on the front edge there, all of a sudden it puts that pelvis into a little bit of an anterior tilt. You're starting to create a little bit of that like wedge shape around L5, S1 territory. Now from there, what does that look like? Oh, that looks like a deadlift. That looks like you're setting yourself up for a good deadlift. Oh, you're setting yourself up for a squat as well. Interesting. Oh, you're setting yourself up to be able to row... A sup board, a stand-up paddle board. Oh, interesting. It's the same thing. Oh, and you're swinging a golf club. Oh, you probably want to maintain that so you can distribute that power through, as opposed to swinging the golf club in this position. Every sport, you'll see the effective athletes that are able to optimize their mechanics. And the way that we can do that is starting just like, you don't need to get a membership anywhere. Just right now, as you're listening to this, figure out creating a stable stack with your, your butt. Love it. Yeah. Love it. That's a start. There's a lot of other things. Oh, yeah. You know, that's like ground zero. Well, it's a big part. I mean, I, when we talk about stretching and, and the big three for me are your glutes, your psoas, and your pecs. I mean, the, the, but two out of the three are in that hip area. So if you can start to really open those up, and those are the biggest, you know, three biggest muscles of the body. So you start to open those up you're going to have so much more movement above and below and that'll that's really and, and it's it's localized too it's it's pretty much where your center of power is right yeah. about there another thing people can play with is thinking about um so from a, a manual therapy perspective working with clients i see especially with women because lots of reasons but for one they're wearing oftentimes metal bras okay so that wireframe bra if you think of like a tree and if it sometimes will grow into say like a fence or some like some cement, it has to kind of form itself around the tree. Oh yeah. That's what we're doing with bras. Right. right. That's what we're doing with big thick hard belts. That's what we're doing. Anything that you put on your fluid structure that's hard metallic, stiff, you start your body literally becomes that tree that has to kind of grow around it. You know, eventually it starts to almost like calcify around that position that's true and so what we what i see with people off like highest percent of the time is uh a lot of thickness and density around these ribs right so there's not very much rib excursion when they're breathing they're just stuck right and then so as we're trying to say talking about this lower back conversation uh the first place that we can think about or maybe the second place since we started about that the second place we can think about is think about opening up around these rib cage so either seeing a manual therapist, getting a ball, getting a band, maybe a foam roller, foam roller wouldn't be as good. A ball or, or a band would be the best thing to get in between these individual ribs and start to speak to that space in between your scapula right, and your rib cage. So if you start to open up into that area, and I'm sure this is stuff that you think about with, with clients or patients as well, uh, then all of a sudden we can start to speak to the rest of the body. But as long as there's this, this stiff, stuck, hard place in your body, good luck getting the rest of the body to connect. Mm -hmm. right? It acts like a dam and just builds up thicker and thicker and thicker. Definitely. Well, the other part I like to look at too is your feet and your foundation. If they're collapsing, then you're not tracking well. And I'm going through a bit of that right now. If my knees are not tracking the way I need to be. I'm a little deconditioned on, on my VMO. And, and so I'm excited to use your line band and start to do more more uh, 
adductor exercises, if you will, more VMO exercise, where you're pulling our leg inward yeah. and really just starting to strengthen that that inner quad area. And yeah. I think I think when you start to learn how to stabilize some of these areas properly, you get the right person to help you manually open them up. And then you have the you have the flexibility, the stability, you having it all in one, you know, you're just putting them all together. Yeah. Knee pain's gonna go away. You're gonna start. I'm gonna start tracking better and not having to worry about stuff. And yeah. that's that's a huge part. And, and see a manual therapist as really, it's really important from my perspective to see a manual therapist as a, as a coach. You want someone that really understands movement and understands self care and. Just because for financial purposes, if nothing else, um, you know, sessions are expensive, especially if you're in, in LA. And so as, as you're seeing somebody, you should really be like, what can I get from this, this person? You know, what, what am I able to really take home and keep working with? Because using a ball or using a band or using a foam roller, you can create really good results. Or just doing your own mobilizations, even without any of that stuff. Going to a yoga class, a Pilates class. There's so many different options. Right, but the big thing is, is again, just that we're, we're, that's spilling into the rest of our days. Your car seat, it very likely needs to change. 99% chance you're in more of like a bucket seat. So all these positions that were like, oh, these positions, bad. What are you getting every time you get in your car? And so if you're paying a therapist 300 bucks to do a session, and then you go back in your fetal position car with your forward head posture, and upper cross syndrome, and lower cross syndrome, and all those different words that's the mold that your car is it's you're wasting everybody's time and the airplanes and the airplanes yeah and probably your couch and probably the you know this chair is this chair is not too bad actually uh you know but the world that we live in is built for the most part by dysfunctional people for dysfunctional people the people that are in the factories the people that are making these car seats all that stuff how is how is their mechanics I bet you, with a very high percentage chance, it, it's pretty deplorable. Or they wouldn't make seats like that. <laughs> right? If this was something that was of high value to them, they'd be like, what are we doing? You know, the world's becoming, it's the, the, the depression's becoming the number one leading cause of disability. Or it already, they said by 2020, I think it already happened. You know, but it's like, we're in this mold. You know, so if we can just step back a little bit and see, like, then that's really empowering. Don't you love the car seats where they're whiplash prevention, where they literally bring your head about eight inches in front of your chest just to prevent you from smashing your head back. But the right. whole point is, is we're supposed to be leading with our heart and everything yeah. we're doing, but all the molds that we're putting ourselves into don't allow us to. Yeah. And just as far as I think it's sometimes it's very nebulous when we say like neutral spine, it's like, what the hell does neutral spine mean? Something that you can play with is just figuring out stacking weight. If you can stack weight, you can put, throw some books on your head, right? Or you can have a buddy press weight down through your shoulders. We did this at the, at the, at the, the breakout session at Bulletproof, right? So having someone push down through your shoulders, if you can feel that weight go straight down to your feet, or in this case, straight down to your sit bones, then you're, you're neutral. But if you, as you push that weight down through, you feel one part of your spine kind of blow out that way or blow forward and blow backwards and it feels hard to support it, weight should make you feel better. So as we add load, if you're doing things the right way, you know, it's like anti-fragile. It's like that, that, that force actually makes you stronger. So when you load weight through your spine, if it doesn't make you feel better, um, we need to figure that out. Oh yeah. yeah. Right load, right progression connect those movements so they start to really open up. Yeah. That's all about it. Now, what's a, one of the, just to sum it up a little bit, what's, what are some of the, I know you like to break dance like I do, you'd like to do a lot of different genres of dancing. Flowmaster was one of my old clients who are, he's, he was Usher's lead break dancer, so I got to play a few tricks, hurt myself trying to keep up with them. But uh, what are some, Good whole body, whole brain movements. What are the what are like three take home ones someone could do? I was pondering on this quote by Immanuel Kant, K A N T. I don't want to say cunt when I say his name. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you like hopefully you believe. I've noticed I've been I've been profaned in this conversation. This is uncut, okay. unedited. Uncut, unedited. Well, I apologize in advance for anything that comes out of my mouth and in the past. Um, but anyways, Emmanuel, 
he has a quote that says music is the is the quickening art you know or like the enlivening art is the way i see that you know, so so that's a big thing is is uh just allowing yourself to get moved by something the ocean does a good job moving you mm-hmm. right when you're on a paddleboard you kind of ooh, 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 you, you get moved by it right too often in our lives we're just not moved by anything you know love moves you sexuality moves you right. dance moves you music if you allow it if you're not too stiff i know that you've had that sensation before where like you come into a room you know, or someone just you know, puts on a song, you're like, oh, that, that song, that's, that's my thing. You know, whereas some other music might not connect with you. You know, so something that's, this is like maybe a little bit out there, but uh, surround yourself with music that really moves you. I like that. <laughs> you know, allow yourself, allow your nervous system to get enlivened, to get quickened. That'd be the start. Um, another thing would be, I think the other one, I think ocean is a really big one. Ocean or lakes or any type of water is really beneficial. A lot of us, again, we're stuck in a very stiff reality. And I'd like the counter to ocean be working on deadlifting, working on squatting, you know, working on snatch, not for very many people, but working towards the road to snatching. Um, just overhead kettlebell presses could be great as well, coming down to the little squat, maintaining that. Uh, so pairing these off, being in fluid, being in water, ideally getting kind of slapped around by it a little bit. What that does for your nervous system is really beautiful. Okay, so when we're too rigid and we're in an environment where we can maintain that rigidity, like a, a flat gym, we're not really speaking to that part that gets uh, deeper into our, our nervous system. Most of us are stuck in like a fight, flight, flight. You know, so start treating your movement practice as something that also starts speaking your nervous system to maybe calm you down. That's a practice of movement. So be in water, allow yourself to be moved by water, and then counter that with getting on flat ground, you know, picking up heavy weight, grind, a grind movement. So a deadlift would be a great example. Music, water, deadlift. Awesome. Love it. You guys, we just went beyond on movement and whole body, whole brain training and preparation and living with Aaron Alexander. Thank you so much. That was yeah, awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, you it. are fantastic. So beautiful to hear the movement that that he likes to talk about and talk to. And you guys, if you haven't seen him, check him out. He's got some amazing stuff he's doing here in Venice with his podcast, with his aligned band, with his rolfing and you got rolfing's just one of my favorite modalities as well because these guys they're wizards of the body they know the body so so well so uh, i'm excited to to connect with you we'll have to go do a board meeting out in the water next up <laughs> yeah i love that and enjoy it cool. so where can they find you mm. uh well aligntherapy.com is the easiest place so a-l-i-g-n therapy and uh, from there, people can start the five-day movement challenge. So it breaks down. It's simple, kind of hilarious videos um, in relation to how to integrate fundamentals of good movement into your, your daily daily process. So really simple stuff, really fun, really easy, and that's a good way to get started. Align Podcast is the podcast. All the social media is Align Podcast. So. Love it. Love it. 2018. It's the movement year. It's the it's the year. Yeah, probably the year. A lot of things. The movement year. A lot of different movements, like <laughs> yeah. bowel movements, everything, all different types. Yeah. We'll go there on the next talk. Yeah, be good. Thanks for going beyond with us. Yeah.